this year we started off with a mostly new team. We only had about three returning members who were mostly freshmen. As a team, we break up into subgroups when multiple tasks have to be accomplished. Uh, we broke into a group that was originally intent on building the claws. We went through four generations of claw. Our first generation started with an aluminum claw that kind of surrounded the ring in a semi-circle. It started to bend and it was too flimsy. And so we made our second generation claw, which was made out of PVC. It was too thin. And our third generation was made out of AutoCAD Inventor, where we just formed the shape on the computer and we 3D printed it here at Middleton High School. For creativity, we started by making our claws independent so that we did not have to rely on maybe only grabbing one ring instead of two. We had it so that there's a gap here so that the ring can move up and down so we didn't have to be exact on it when we grabbed it. But we also had uh, touch sensors right here and here. Uh, we used to use them in autonomous and in-game so that we could tell where we were and to take up space. So for our strategy this year, we started off knowing that we needed to be able to score fast and yet be hard to defend. So what we basically did was we tried to weigh down our robot while trying to keep the fastest gear ratio we could. We also knew that we had to be able to score in autonomous, because if we score in autonomous, we get the other team on their heels so they have to score during teleop. This year we have a flexible strategy that allows us to score on both sides of the field to maximize our scoring options. During endgame we have a ramp, so if everything goes downhill, we still have a ramp to fall back on. Our strategy also includes no defense to maximize our ranking points. After every tournament, we review and set goals for the next tournament so we can continuously evolve our robot. There were several design implementations that we tried to incorporate into our robot, including the gold and black paint job, which we thought would help individualize us. Our claws happen to work reverse to an engine piston, whereas the axle is moving the piston up and down causes the claws to open and shut without really damaging the servos. We used an 80-20 industrial linear lift system on a robot. We had catted our linear lift system before building it to ensure that everything would fit properly. Our team is very enthusiastic in the way we view our tournaments. We all wear the same t-shirt, wear masks to show our, what our team is, masquerade. And when we don't have teammates on the field, the rest of the people are out on stands cheering them on or promoting first. We communicate in several ways. We have a team website, a team newspaper, a Facebook page, and a YouTube page. We meet twice a week unless it's before a tournament, then we meet five times a week. And we met four times over holiday break. For outreach so far this season, we've mentored rookie team 5937 Renaissance Robotics. And we've also hosted a robot league meet. Also, at our school, we hosted a build it day. And during the Christmas season, we collected money and gifts and gave it to the Domestic Violence Center in Tampa, Florida. The club sets the budget, and we have a budget for every team. Ours is an engineering notebook. Our robot costs around two to three thousand dollars to build. We have about two hundred dollars left to raise, excluding worlds. To me, gracious professionalism means to be a good sport and just showing up on time and just doing the things you're supposed to be doing and being nice about it.